In the interest of getting to the point and not taking away an entire portion of writing from another video that I'm going to be working on soon, I'm going to spare a lot of the details involved in the making of the 1999 Macworld Halo demo and just say that essentially, this is something that's groundbreaking. Way back in the late 90s, there was a Macworld Expo being held that introduced an infant version of what we know today as Halo. Before all the talk of Cortanas and Didacts and Blanky Mode, mode there was this. This strange little world that seemed not to be combat evolved as we'd come to know it, but a bridge that links it to something else entirely, a as if in another universe, this is the game that people got. Ever since I saw this demo, I wanted to play it so fucking badly. Not only do I have a raging hard-on for early 2000s video game graphics, but it just sports this strange atmosphere that feels familiar yet alien all at once. Hell, I even mentioned how badly I want this weird little demo to be released least in the script for that video I mentioned I'm working on earlier, and how 343 will probably never release it, because why would they? And then in the script it says, show a clip of someone being beheaded? That's kind of weird, I don't remember writing that. Point is, this old demo, despite how worthless and weird it may seem, is really important to me. It shows us the foundation of this series we love so much and provides a piece of interactive history. There are a handful of old videos posted by Bungie where they actually play through this old version of Halo. And a year or two ago, one of the earlier devs posted footage of them using weapons and equipment to Twitter that were cut from the final product, and of course, wildlife. Oh sorry, I meant the wildlife we actually wanted. Master Chief looks just slightly off and has these little missile launchers on his shoulders. The elites look like they're wearing the equivalent of space lingerie. There are these big, weird beasts with BIG MEATY CLAWS! And the map it takes place in looks like some weird fucking fever dream. CE always had this liminal, uncanny atmosphere to it, like I'm always wondering what's off in the distance or over that hill, and this demo seems to be channeling that idea beautifully. Up until this point, however, what exactly is over those hills or inside that structure has all been left up to our imagination because any sign of this relic's existence has only been experienced through non-interactive visuals. Okay, I'll stop tickling your tip and tell you what the point of all this is. It's playable. For once in the last decade, 343 Industries made a good decision and dropped this ancient piece of Halo history onto the Steam Workshop as a downloadable mod for Halo Combat Evolved and the Master Chief Collection, a perfect way to show people their recent Steam Workshop compatibility update. Okay, let's stop. I'm excited, you're, I hope, excited. So let's just install this f***ing thing and finally experience what I always assumed would only be a pipe dream. Before the level can even boot up, I can feel my anxiety rising, and then that sweet, sweet little loading bar fills, and bam, here we are. Wow. Standing here now, yeah, it's nothing too crazy, it just feels like a weird version of CE, but this is still so wild. I turn to my left and see a line of Spartans, so I do what I usually do when I meet someone for the first time. All of these more modern looking Master Chief models are only slightly different from what we actually got in 2001, with some small additions such as colored pieces of armor and antenna, some bulkier looking armor. What I find interesting is that these two groups of Spartans have Spartans that have different colors on them, like this chief has some blue and this chief is just straight up white. Sure, this could just be some different designs that progressively got closer to the chief we have now, but what if these are some type of alternate outfits he would wear throughout the campaign? We know that this jet ski was removed from the game, so what if he had to put on some type of water-resistant armor, or if in two betrayals he sported white armor to blend in with the snow? <laughs> Of course, the Beta Master Chief armor is such a weird little thing as well. Yeah, the design is really strange and definitely looks like something that came out of the early Bungie era, but it's got some charm to it. But yeah, it was a good idea to scrap it and go with something a little less complicated. Simplicity is key. Naturally, the first place I want to go is the B4 runner structure that I spawned in to get a taste of this mysterious architecture before it ended up being the mysterious architecture we know it as now, and... 
yeah, it's still really fucking creepy. Combat Evolved was the only Halo game for me that was able to truly creep me out with the Forerunners and just how ancient their building style and culture were. And in this, it certainly doesn't get any better. In fact, it feels creepier. Maybe it's just this bottomless fucking pit or the lights on the ceiling that seem as if they were made just big enough for me to question why they're that big in the first place. I mean, come on, you don't need that much fucking light, come on. The textures on them also feel very 2000s. They don't feel and look as intricate and timeless as they do in CE or 2 and 3. They definitely seem like something I'd see roaming around Von Braun or taking a leisurely stroll through the Nostromo. And wow, this little command center for the Halo ring looks extremely fucking sleek for the time period. I know that one of the crazy things about this demo back in 99 were that the graphics were revolutionary for gaming, but Good god, I didn't ever really understand that impression until now. I jump into a comfy looking warthog and set off through this little island just to see the sights. Oddly enough, the island is pretty detailed for what it is. It's not just smeared sand and dirt textures. It's a real bona fide island with tire tracks and roads and little grassy areas with some trees sprouted up between them. I wonder if this area was ever going to be implemented in some way, like if there's some importance to this on Installation 01. What if this was supposed to be the beginning silent cartographer? There's some desert hills and grassy areas and whatever the f this is. Some neat little bridges and waterfalls. I said before that CE has a very uncanny atmosphere and this island really makes it stronger. You've got the all-seeing eyes of this massive low-res planet looming over you and there isn't a single sign of life or nature for, I'm assuming, hundreds of miles. And it really drives home this unnerving sense of detachment and loneliness, like I'm some sh stained action figure running around the piss-drenched playset of some stupid kid. There are some vehicles, like, as I said, warthogs, and this thing from Halo 2, and then this thing from Halo 2, both of which you can drive, and there's even some very realistic looking tanks that seem to be almost directly from when Halo was supposed to be a realistic military RTS game. But most importantly, we've got... Burr. But the real meat and potatoes of this demo is the environments and I've already covered them so bye bye see you in the next one. No but seriously there's a giant fucking pile of guns just like lying here on the ground. This is Trump's America. Back when footage of this demo came out before it was playable, the most prominent thing I remember being shown off was the wide variety of weapons that just looked so off in comparison to the weapons we actually got in the final product. Like, I am so fucking excited to walk through here and see what these do. We start the map off with this assault rifle with a yellow ammo counter and some tan colors on the accents. It shoots like a regular AR, but has grenades added to it. Cool. Nice. Fine addition to my collection. Those pesky Jehovah's Witnesses will never know what hit them. I picked up another rifle that sounds like I just stepped foot in Compton and it puts me in third person like it's an out of body experience. What? Why do you look like that? Straighten your back up, man. That's gonna fuck you up one day if you keep doing that. Oh yeah, Halo was also gonna be a third person shooter instead of a first person shooter, which is why I'm getting sent out of the back of this guy's head like JFK. A lot of these weapons are just normal ass Halo weapons, but what the fuck? This looks like a gun from that other Bungie game, Oni. Holy sh**, I need to put this thing down. Oh hey, it's the plasma rifle from the beta a few months before CE came out. Watch that one video by the Vengeful Vatdom if you want to know what I'm talking about. We got some more weird automatic weapons and some more weird plasma weapons. A lot of it really isn't that unique or crazy. It's not like I'm gonna bend over into this dirt and find a forklift driving license or something. It's all just variations of SMGs, pistols, or sniper rifles. Like this lever action rifle that doesn't even have a model tied to the first person view. A weapon I thought was really interesting was this fucking harpoon gun, which implies that perhaps there could have been sea creatures being fought at some point? Oh sh**, that's a really fucking cool- I just picked up a shiny ass pistol that looks like I taped a speedometer to the top of Hawk Moon, and this thing is really cool. Maybe it's like the baby steps of what we would get in ODST. Oh hey, the excavator from that one gun that was cut from Halo 3. Wow, that's actually really cool. Okay, next. There's some rocket launchers. There's an anti-tank or anti-aircraft rocket launcher that you have to depend on this wonky third-person reticle for. Speaking of third-person reticle, mine keep getting stuck in the ground when I unequip a weapon and it's really starting to freak me out. We got a machete, which is cool. And one of the coolest of all is a minigun. 
There's a minigun for both first and third person, but the FPS one is objectively better because seeing Chief hold this thing up with those big sweaty arms is just infinitely cooler, I'm sorry. Yet another thing that would soon come to fruition in later titles, it really just goes to show how competent Bungie was with their shit. Oh wait, never mind. Oh, here's one of those weird weapons that I saw in those old gameplay videos I was talking about that were posted to Twitter. I wonder how long I can hold it down for. This gun looks cool, but I hope it doesn't fucking explode in my hands like half of these other weapons. Saving the best for last. Oh yeah, we've got an energy sword pre-Halo 2, and I see my prey. I've wanted to use an energy sword in CE for so long. I'm gonna show this stupid motherfucker what it feels like to feel pain. These tanks have some really cool effects. When you shoot them, the debris goes flying in all directions, and not just up with a dirt mound. And, like the fathers of people who cosplay as anime characters on Twitter, I leave. I fly up and try to get another last good look at this map before I close this game and go play Baldur's Gate 3 like every other fucking schmuck on the face of the earth right now. One thing that's cool is that when you shoot missiles into the water with this vehicle, they have like a delayed explosion. I don't know if that's realistic or even intentional but it's cool. And again, it's just so cool how there's another cut vehicle here that would later see itself being a part of the actual series in some way. But as with most things in this demo, it doesn't really fit with the art style very well, and yeah, it's probably for the best it was cut out completely. I circle back around the island and back to the playground entrance, hopping onto this jet ski, hoping to catch some epic waves and feel some intense heat. So, I think we've discovered all there really is to discover here, so let's finish this on a good note. Now, there's a few things missing or different in this demo from the original Macworld demo. There's no banshees, there's no ghosts, there's none of those crusty little hind-legged shit-eaters running around, and just from looking at old footage, you can tell there's a lot of environmental and graphical differences. Despite all of this... This was a blast. Being able to step into this tiny little world that seemed forever lost to the hands of time was something incredible and special for me. Being able to reach back and see Halo before Halo, like if you get it, was extremely uncanny and entertaining and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I really hope that people take these assets and make modded campaigns out of them or something and 343 made an extremely good decision by putting in the effort of fixing and adapting this to modern technology and allowing us to play it. Not to play down the importance of this at all because this is a massive step and it's a really big deal, but now that we have this demo, the doors have opened to another demo far more elusive than this one, the Halo 2 demo. A demo notorious for being the skeleton of Halo 2 before it crashed and burned horrifically. This may have been confirmed to happen already because like I glanced at some article written by 343 and I saw something about Halo 2 cut content, I don't remember, but I don't know, so, uh, update me, I guess, if any of you know. I'll have more videos out soon that will be longer and more focused on, like, an actual review of something, but this was too cool to not cover. If you enjoyed this, leave a like to boost this video in the algorithm, subscribe, and stick with me throughout my adventures, and leave a comment about your thoughts of this demo and my video, negative or not. And as always, good night.